Chuck, we're at it again. Indeed we are. This time, I just want to talk about nothing. Oh my God. <laughs> a show of... What's the deal with nothing? We're doing a show about nothing. All right, that's... You want to, <laughs> you want to talk about nothing? Let's, now, so let's, do, let's do this. So it's, someone, a, it's official. We're married now. You know that, right? <laughs> if, so, if, so, somebody hands you a, a birthday gift. Right. Right. And it's a box and you open it and and there's nothing in it, you'd say there's nothing in it. If it's if it's empty, you'd say there's nothing in it, correct? Yes, and I'd also probably say, again, really guys? Again, with the with the empty box thing. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get into your social personal family issues. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How your family members treat you, that's another show. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. So, so uh, of course, there's air in the box. But generally, we think of air and nothing else as nothing. Right? Right. There's nothing in the box. But, of course, there's air in the box. Right. And I think we think of air as nothing because you can't see the air. And air is just molecules, right? We have oxygen molecule. Two oxygen atoms together make the oxygen molecule. We have two nitrogen atoms together make the nitrogen molecule. That's 98%, 99% of all the molecules you are inhaling. There's others, a little bit of CO2, right. trace amounts of other atoms and molecules. But the main ones are oxygen and nitrogen, and they are transparent. So you don't think of it as being something. But you could have another gas in there like smoke. You open up the box, there's smoke in the box. Right. Okay, because you can see it. So often what we sense or what we declare is or is not is based on just how our senses receive the environment. You go up to a window and you say, oh, it's a, the window is transparent. Yes. Well, if you, could, if you could see with microwaves, right. the whole room would be transparent because microwaves pass right through the walls. You know how you know that? Because you pull out your cell phone, which uses microwaves, and you get a signal even if you're in the bathroom. Not with okay. my carrier. <laughs> oh, you need special bathroom coverage. I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> All right. So, so how, how many molecules are there? So there's about 10 to the 25th power, one with 25 zeros worth of air molecules in a cubic meter. Okay, that's little, a, little, that's a little, lot. A little bigger than a, than, a, than a cubic yard, okay? That's a lot of molecules. That's a lot of molecules. Even has, that, that number has a name, a septillion. Septillion. Septillion, that's right. So now, you want to do better than that, let's create a laboratory vacuum, okay? Okay. Because if air is something more than nothing, then let's get rid of the air. Let's go okay. ahead and do that. So Suck let's get it out. Suck it. Let's get one of the best laboratory vacuums there is. Okay, so that can pump out the molecules and leave you with about ten billion molecules per cubic meter. Wait a minute. After you suck it yes. everything out, <laughs> that's that's the, kind of the best you can do with that's the, the tip best of... you can do. You still got ten billion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chuck. <laughs> I took it from ten to the twenty fifth power <laughs> to ten to the tenth power. I, I'm, I'm just saying. Are, are we using a Dyson? Okay. <laughs> the Dyson. Are we using the Dyson? Because maybe Dyson we could do, vacuum maybe would we totally could do kick better. ass. Right. We might do better. Okay. <laughs> Let's call Dyson, see if they'll sponsor this, this bit. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry you're not happy with 10 billion molecules per cubic meter when we started with 10 septillion. Okay. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. So is that nothing, you might ask? Okay. Well, let's le forget laboratory vacuums. Let's leave Earth. And go right. into interplanetary space. The vacuum of space. Okay. That's a thousand times less dense than the best laboratory vacuums. That has about 10 million molecules per cubic meter. We just dropped by a factor of a thousand. Well, why, why are there still molecules? Because there's... I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you'd be that hard to please, Chuck. I'm trying to get to nothing, man. <laughs> we're, we're on our way there. Oh, by the way, there is the very best vacuum there ever was on Earth. Hoover. And it is, it, is the, it is the track that the hadrons travel in the Large Hadron Collider in the CERN Particle Accelerator in Switzerland. CERN, C-E-R-N -E yeah. acronym. Uh, the Center for... Uh, European nuclear research, okay? 
right. That's and good. or research nuclear. It's France, you know, so they got to flip the order. Research nuclear. <laughs> nuclear. <laughs> So I cannot so, believe there is no smoking here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it turns out that vacuum is the best ever made, and that's a better vacuum than in interstellar space. I mean, sorry, interplanetary space. Wow. So you want the, the the most nothing place in the entire solar system is in the tube where they accelerate the particles because they don't want the particles accidentally hitting some other particle. When it's trying to hit the target that you have that's going to probe the origins of the universe and looking for, you know, uh, exotic particles that might even include dark matter. But anyhow, let's go from interplanetary space to interstellar space. Okay. That's even less. Now we're down to a half a million particles per cubic meter. Okay. Half a million. That's pretty wild. Uh, All right. Half, only a half of 500,000. 500,000, so correct. We started at a septillion. Correct. And, and these are leftover. It's just a, it's a reminder. It's, it's a reminder that the universe, there's stuff in the universe, all right? And there are places where it has collected and gathered. That's where you get stars and planets and people. Where it hasn't collected and it hasn't gathered, it's much more scattered, much mm. more tenuous, okay? So that's interstellar space. Now, what would you imagine would have less than interstellar space? Intergalactic space? Intergalactic space. Because galaxies are gatherings of matter, right? right? So there, it would be hard to find a few atoms of anything for every 10 cubic meters. That's so... But it's still not nothing. Just... Excuse me, I'm, I'm on my way there. Damn, you're the most impatient... This thing only lasts 10 minutes, and you can't even just... <laughs> I'm just saying, we, we're all the way out into intergalactic space, yes. okay? Yes. I am light years away from home, and okay. it's like driving between here and, like, Vegas. <laughs> and, I mean, there's just a lot of nothing going on, and I'm still at not at nothing, though. You're still not at nothing. Okay, so now... Let's so rather than give real live examples, let's give examples that we would imagine you could produce, which is get rid of those half a million uh, atoms per 10 cubic meters. Just figure out a way to ha not have them. Okay, so right. now we have a completely empty box, empty of all matter. Okay, now, now we ask, is that nothing? Yeah, because there's nothing Except in the box, sect quantum physics. Oh, god. <laughs> God. There's such a thing as virtual particles that come into existence and then go out of existence in less time than you can actually measure their existence. And totally empty space is seething with virtual particles. Okay, so the best nothing you can ever, you can ever make would have no ordinary matter but would still nonetheless be seething with virtual particles. Okay. Wow. Now, let's okay. ask a question. Suppose yes. you could step out of our universe so that there's not even virtual the particles. no matter and there's not even the virtual particles. I'm, I'm willing to do that. Okay, so that's there's not even nothing. Right. So we could get lazy and just call it nothing, nothing. Right. But I, I think there's a greater nothing than even that. And this okay. is where I want to leave you. To, this, is, this is where I want to deposit you the in the universe. greater nothing than you nothing. Ready? Imagine you take away all matter and somehow configure a way to where there's not even virtual particles. Right. You would still have the laws of physics. Okay. Is a region of space nothing... If the laws of nature still apply inside that space. See, you're thinking of nothing as substance, and I'm thinking of nothing as not even anything that is anything about anything. So if you systematically remove all laws of physics, all laws of nature, then you have a region of, I can't even call it space, because space is a thing. Space can bend according to right. Einstein relativity. Right. That's a thing. The fabric okay? of space. The fabric of space. No matter right. what's in it will bend with or without virtual particles. Right, it's right. still a thing. Right. Okay? 
So if I get rid of all particles, get rid of the very laws that describe nature, then there's not only not matter, there's not energy, there are no laws of physics, there is no time itself. There you go. No time. Now, Chuck, put that in your box, open it, and now you have my permission to say there's nothing, nothing in the box. Right. <laughs> there's, there's nothing, nothing in the box. box. And what do we call that? I'm going to call it something. What? Because it's the nothing that is something which is nothing. <laughs> <Jack>. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a 12 year old kid just just rattling <laughs> it's a something there's nothing that's something I think it's something there's nothing so it's a thumping thumping it <laughs> uh, no, so, that's pretty that's, uh, pre I, that's pretty I, intense to think about though because what where you got me is because no laws of physics now you can't even have time now you really there really is no thing there at correct. all correct correct and you know you could take this one step higher and say the fact that i can describe it as being nothing has given meaning to the thing allowing me to say that it's not nothing because i can describe it as having nothing Right. So yeah. So now that. Says so philosophically, right? It's. I mean, it's. It's partly a language issue, partly a, a physical issue. What does it mean to be able to describe something at all that is nothing? That means you've described something that is a thing. Right. Now let me say, let's not even have anything that you can describe. Right. Now what you got nothing. What? Now you got nothing. And what do you call that? See, because you can't call it nothing. That's because, the point. No, no, that's the whole point. You can't call it anything because then you, it you've just contained it. Right. You, you've just turned it into a thing that's a thing. That's right. Oh, man. See, that's pretty wild. There you go. That, that is wild. Oh, so, okay. Now, for those of you who would like to now go smoke your marijuana <laughs> and rewatch this and rewatch this, <laughs> this is what I am saying to you. <laughs> <laughs> but for what it's worth there's one of the layers of multiverses because there's several layers where there, the laws of physics as we know them don't even apply at all they're not just different they just don't exist don't exist yeah and so uh, that's another thing we'll talk about the multiverse in another uh, explainer video but we gotta go check all right. Okay. I'll see you in the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking weed in the multiverse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that Chuck smokes weed. <laughs> Damn, that All right. This has been yet another Star Talk explainer video. Uh, Chuck, always good to have you. Neil deGrasse Tyson, bidding you to keep looking up.